In this tutorial, we're going to model the hammer. Specifically, we're going to look at the hammer head. I'm going to come up to preferences and show you a couple of preferences that I have changed that I think are improvements over the default. In navigation, I turn on orbit around selection and zoom to mouse position. I also tend to turn perspective off. The first thing that we're going to do is take note that I've got the cursor right where we want to start the object and I'm going to come up to the add menu and we're going to add a cylinder in place. By default it's going to be pretty big and I'm going to change it to one inch by one inch and I want the segments to be 16 segments and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees around the Y axis. It's still a little bit big so we will zoom in, press the S key to scale that down just a little bit and I'm going to press the S key again and then X to constrain it to only scaling along the X axis. Since I'm in the move tool I'm going to move it just a little bit like that. So that's our starting point. It's the round component of the hammerhead. What I'm going to do is change the position of the cursor. So I'm going to come up to the cursor tool, grab the cursor and then press the X key so that we only move it along the X axis until it gets right into the middle area there. Then what I'm going to do is add an object for this and we're just going to add a cube. It's pretty enormous so I'm going to change it to two inches and then I'm going to press the S key to generally scale that into about the position and size that I want. It can be rough, it doesn't need to be exact. And then I'm just going to move it over a little bit, but I really want those to be aligned right there along the x-axis. Press the tab key, and then we're going to come over to the loop cut function, and I'm going to click once there, but I'm going to change this to three segments. Do the same thing here, three segments, and then we're going to do the same thing here. I've got x-ray on so it's a little hard to see, there we go. Three. Perfect. So that's our starting point. Come back into the front view. So what I want to do is let's come back into x-ray mode. So we're going to be toggling back and forth between x-ray mode. It'll affect selection, it affects the visibility, so we just get used to toggling back and forth. First thing that I want to do is take note that we're going to be following this profile and we're going to be looking at this profile and this profile, so this area. I will select that top corner right there and I'm just going to move it so it kind of comes down into position and this one I'm going to move over till it kind of comes into position like that and that's what I'm using so that looks pretty good about like that. In fact I think on this one I'm going to change just a little bit and I'm going to mold these so that it actually creates a little bit more curvature coming back. Top I'm just going to form it so that these conform to that top profile. And then here on this side I'm going to mold it and my eye is looking right down here and we're going to do that. So this will end at the top and then we'll just do a little bit of reforming to distribute the curvature up there a little bit. What we want to be aware of is that this is all a planar region. So we can change all of these polygons in the middle without worrying about it affecting anything too much. And here I will just shift these. So oh, I got to switch back over into x-ray. That affects selection in a couple of ways. There we go. But one of the things that we're going to be looking at is you want to try and maintain loops as much as possible when you're working with subdivision surfaces. So we're going to come down here and do a cool thing. There's a really obvious lack of resolution right here in order to maintain that curve. Press the K key and I'm going to click there and drag over until I hit that vertex. But I want to do a cut through so press the C key and then click and then hit return and I'm going to rotate the view and now you can see what that did for us was that it cut that all the way through. Let me come back to the front which is one on the numeric keypad. I'm going to marquee around this and I'm just going to move that up a little bit closer so that works better. This is going to make more sense as we progress through the tutorial too. Okay, so that's look, looking pretty good. Let's come down maybe this, I'll pull this in a little bit more. To the bottom here we're going to switch over into face mode and I'm going to marquee around those bottom polygons. We're going to come over to our extrude region function 
and we're going to region extrude those down just along the z-axis. So I'm going to press Z. There we go. And we'll come over here and mold these to fit the profiles. There we go. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is bridge them together. Let's press the tab key to leave edit mode for the body and we're going to enable tab key to enter edit mode for this. So we're going to marquee around this end gone, which is edge on right there. And then I'm going to come over and just do an extrude region, pull this out until we get right about there. And you can see it's been set to go along the normal, which is great. It's just along the X axis. Then what I'm going to do is come over to the loop cut function, click once, and then change that to three divisions. I'm going to come back to the move tool, but I'm going to scale these. And in fact, I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to select those right there, those loops. We've, so we've got four edge loops selected and I want to scale these. So if I press the S key, they all scale down to that center point, but we can change it to only scale around a given axis. So this is sometimes referred to as radial scaling. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, there are a whole bunch of options built into this tool. But what we want to do is only scale around the X axis. So I'm going to press shift and X and you can see what that does is it changes it. So it's scaling uniformly, but only around the X axis until I get that down about like that. And then I can just select these right here, S key, Shift X, and I can scale those uniformly, but only around the X axis. So it's maintaining the circularity that we want. And then this right here looks pretty good. But one thing that I want to do is I would like to maybe scale it down just a little bit, but I want to show you one thing that we could do is I could select that partial loop on the bottom right there, scale it from this location. But I first need to come up here to vertex mode, select those vertices at the center. I'm going to press shift and S and I'm going to say cursor to selection. I'm going to select these vertices, which I can do in vertex mode or edge mode. But now the pivot is at the center of the selection. So I'm going to press the period key and I'm going to change the pivot point to be at the 3D cursor location. Now I can press the S key to scale that, but I only want to scale along the Z direction. So I want to stretch this down just a little bit to get a little bit closer to the profile right there. Okay, so these are pretty close and ready to merge. But it looks like something is not right with my model. I'm going to press the tab key. This got created at the cursor's position, which was not at the center of our 3D universe. And we can see our origin is right at the center. So I'm going to come up to item and I want its position, its location along the Y axis to be zero. And that will just get us right back into position. What I want to do now is merge both of these. So I'm going to hold the shift key and select this, bring up the context menu and then join them together. Okay. Tab key takes us into edit mode. Now the reason that we started our object with the cube and then divided it into that four by four subdivisions was so that we could merge these because that creates a total of 16 polygons, which matches to the 16 edges around this end gone right there. So all I have to do is come up to the top. Now I'm going to switch over to selection circle and I'm going to hold the shift key and just marquee around these polygons. Remember, we extruded these down. These are the original ones. And in order to bridge, I want to dissolve those faces. They became, become a single end gone that has the same number of perimeter edges holding the shift key as that does right there. And now I can bring up the context menu and I can bridge those together. I'm going to come back into the front view. And I think what I'd like to do to form this a little bit better is to take that loop and we're going to use the edge slide function and I'm going to slide that just a little bit more closely and I'm going to take this and maybe slide that a little bit more. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and I'd like to, to form this a little bit so that there's a little bit of rounding in the top here. So if we come up into the top, I'm going to select these. I'm going to press the period key to switch the pivot back to active Actually, let's do bounding box. This will be better. So it'll go to the center 
and then I'm going to select just that one. I want there to be just this little bit of rounding. And these are the kind of things that you can do interactively to change that. There we go. And let's do the same thing on the bottom down here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to move that forward, and then select just that center and bring it forward just a little bit. And in fact, we can do the same thing down here. just to give that a little bit of rounding, a little bit better contouring. I, I want to come down and do just a little bit more forming work with these vertices. I pulled them out so there's a little bit of curvature here, but I think I'd like it to conform just a little bit better to my profile. So what I'll do is I'm going to come back over and switch this to select box, and that'll allow me to just actually select a single vertex right there or I can marquee around those. I'm going to press shift and X and I'm going to do cursor to selected and then I'm going to press the period key and I'm going to tell the pivot to remain where the cursor's location is and so now I can select those, press the S key and I'm going to scale them just along the X axis so I can pull those forward like that and that'll give a little bit better contouring according to my profile. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come to the front. I'm going to rotate, select this edge by double clicking it. We're going to come down to the bevel tool. We're going to change it from its default to two segments and then the shape we want to be one. And that will give us that inset. That's very important for subdivision surfaces because these are going to be boundary edges that we're going to place curvature inside of. So I'm going to double click this again. Now we're going to configure it to be three segments, but I want to go back to 0.5 for my shape, and then that will give us this. And so what I've done is I've created this loop and this loop are planar boundaries between topologies on either side of the curvature. That's really good for subdivision surfaces to make sure this area remains flat and this remains curved and then this remains flat. Okay, I'm going to select this face, bring up the context menu, and we're going to invoke the poke face function to sort of terminate that right in the middle. And in vertex mode, we're going to come back into front and I'm going to select Let's go into X-Ray so that we can do this with Select Box. I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to select every other vertex there. With the Move tool, we're going to... Now, I'm going to press the Period key to remove move that pivot back to the bounding center, and we're going to do that. We're just going to move those in a little bit. We're going to return to that a little bit later, but... I'm going to double click it in edge mode and we're going to return to our bevel tool friend. Two segments, shape of one, and then produce boundaries on either side of that, about like that. That looks good. Okay. So now we're going to return our attention back to this section over here. So what I want to do is come over and select these polygons right there, which are those back ends. But we're at a point now where we're going to be diverging to create two arms of the back part of the hammer that remove nails. So it needs to split. I'm going to come into the top view, and since I'm in select box, I'm going to select around those polygons. Press the X key to delete those. Come back into the front view. I'm going to select these. We're going to come back over to the extrude region function, and I'm going to pull those out just a little ways like that. Now what we want to do is form this a little bit because it, it splits like a V in the back. So let's come in by rotating this and in vertex mode I'm going to select that single vertex, press shift and S and we're going to assign the 3D cursor to be at that location and then if I reselect all of these you can see that the pivot goes to the selection center. So period key and we're going to tell the pivot to go to the 3D cursor location. So I'm going to just press the S key and then press Y to only scale along that direction. So I'm just going to scale it in, in just a little bit like that. There we go. So that's going to create sort of the V shape that we want. 
I will come back into front and let's go ahead and extrude this now. So we'll come down to the extrude tool, but in this case, we're gonna use the extrude to cursor function. So this is pretty cool. I'm just gonna click here to create another extrusion. I'll click here and here, and then finally one right down there. And then we can adjust those quite easily. So if you need to, let's press the period key to return the bounding box there. I'm going to select a single edge and get access to that angle for transformation purposes. So we're going to come up here to the transform orientation. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to switch that to normal. And this is what happens. You can see how it has aligned itself so that one of the axes is exactly aligned to that vector. That's what we want. Now that it's in normal mode, click plus and it will save that. And then I can come back over in vertex mode and select all of those. And then what I can do is press the S key, but I want to scale only along that local Y axis and I can scale that down and then I can even move it into position a little bit better. So let's do the same thing over here. That's actually pretty close, so I'm just gonna use that. So let's press the S key, Y for local axis, and then I'm gonna move that right there. S key, Y for local axis scaling. And then the next one here is probably gonna change enough that I want to redefine that. So I'll select that edge. I'm gonna delete that, go to normal, press the plus key, and then I can actually double click that loop and I can just use edge mode for scaling. S key, but I wanna press Y. And then I can just move that up until it matches. There we go. Select this. X, we need to do normal first, then plus, and then double click that. S key, Y, and then move that position. Do it one more time here. Remove the previous one, go to normal, plus, double click that loop, S key, press the Y key, and then move that up. I'll do it a little bit more, S, Y, and there we go. I think that works. So now when we come into the top view, you can see it's maintained that, and that's what we want. So we're gonna come back over here into global mode. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We need to keep forming the back. If we take a look at this in the top, there needs to be a little bit of curvature going outwards. So what I'm gonna do is, we'll do this in vertex mode. I'm gonna select those vertices and we're gonna use proportional editing. And in order to do this, you really have to use a mouse. On my laptop, when I'm using the trackpad, I can't seem to access this, so I'm using a mouse right now. And what I wanna do, if I press the G key, I can freeform move this, and if I press Y, I can move just that, but I'd really like it to get just a little bit of shape applying to those right there. So I'm gonna turn on proportional editing, and I'm just in smooth. So press the G key, and it's gonna start moving everything because the influence area is enormous. So I'm gonna press Y to constrain movement to the Y, and then I'm gonna start moving the mouse button. And if you see at the top left corner, there's a proportional size for smooth, and I'm gonna keep moving until I see the selection, the influence circle get to about like that, about like that. Okay, and then you can come in and turn that off, and you can do a little bit of further editing if you feel you want the shape to be a little bit more fine-tuned. But we also want to come in here now and take these and just move those down a little bit. So I'm actually going to just do this manually. Sometimes having a tool that you want to try and do everything by some mechanism takes longer for the mechanism to get set up than for you to just do it by hand. So I'm just going to do that by hand just to get that curvature in. And there we go. So we've got one side of that model, and that's all we needed to do. We have a little bit more modeling work to do down here because this needs to be at kind of an angle. So I'm going to select these and I'm going to change that so that there's that angle right there. And that works pretty well. That works pretty well. Cool.
Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention back over to this area, because if you remember at the beginning of the tutorial, I said that we want to be able to try and establish polygon loops as much as possible. And this is a case where we can do that. I'm going to press the K key and I'm going to go from here to here and then hit enter. And then in edge mode, I'm going to select this edge, bring up the context menu, and I'm going to dissolve it. And then what we end up with is a loop. Ta-da! So that's a good way of reconfiguring it. And the more you model, you get to see these. And you can do some minor bits of adjusting for the flow of the loop. It's not super critical, but you can do that. Like, I like to do that. <laughs> I like things to look nice. Okay, so we've reached a really good point where we've got the basic overall structure in place, and this is where we're going to start adding some detail. Now let's do a look along the side, and we can see that we've got a pretty flat profile, and it really would be better to have sort of a curvature. Okay, so let's come back into the front view, and I want to isolate some of the vertices that I want to operate on with a lattice. So these, in fact, I'm going to hold the control key down and deselect those right there. Those are the ones that we want to operate on with the lattice. And so I need to assign those to sort of a selection set, if you will. So we're going to come down to object data properties, to vertex groups, and I'm going to press the plus key. And I'm just going to call this body verts. Make sure you click the assign button. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to put, I'm going to press the tab key to leave polygon edit mode, and we're going to add a lattice. But I've got the cursor right here. So remember, it gets added where the cursor's location is. So what I'm going to do is I just, I'm going to move it a little bit more close to where the center is. And the location, I want to make sure it's at zero along the y-axis, which is our center point, our symmetry point, if you want to think about it that way. Now we're going to come over to add. Let's add a lattice. By default, it's going to be huge. So let's make it two inches. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to press the S key to scale it. And I think I'm going to press the X key to scale just along the X axis. And then I'll move it with the move tool until it encompasses. So S key, X. So it's scaling that way, and then I can move it down. So it's encompassing the region of the vertex selection set, like that. Now we want to come over here and change it to a 4x4x4. Four by four by four. And we also need to look at it through the left-right axis there, the x-axis, because we don't want it to influence the symmetry point. So S key, and then we're going to press Y to only scale through the Y axis. We really don't want it to be or need it to be any larger than the geometry. So you can just continue to refine that Y key. And then we'll get it like that. But we don't want it to influence those vertices right there. Come back into the front view. Now, one thing to remember here is that you don't want to do an apply scale. Apply scale is something we frequently do when we're doing polygon modeling. In fact, uh, it would actually be good for us to do an apply scale here on this object, the primary object we're working on, but you don't want to do that to lattices. We're going to come and assign a modifier that is a lattice modifier. And then we want to tell it to use the lattice and we want it to only affect those body verts. Now we can come over to the lattice and we can start affecting things. So let's look at this through the left view here. I'm going to press the tab key and I'll select these right down there. Come over to the move tool and you can see how that is now affecting the shape of the body. We could do the same thing up at the top and we can give sort of curvature to the shape of the body like that. It just needs to be subtle. It doesn't need to be extreme. But here's the deal. We're doing this a little bit early on, and we don't want to apply this quite yet. So I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode, and we're going to come back to the hammer object, and we're actually going to remove it, the influence for right now, but we're going to keep the lattice. 
Okay, so we just sort of set it up at this point. We're gonna keep it. Now what we wanna do is add, start adding some of the constraining geometry to this that's gonna make it round around the corners. So let's come into edit mode, press the tab key. We're gonna switch into vertex mode and I'm gonna double click on these major I'm holding the shift key to add the selection on these major corner areas. Hold the shift key. This one's going to overshoot. That's okay. Here and here. And when it comes to this area, we're in select box. So I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to marquee around the areas that I don't want. But if you just direct select something to deselect it, you have to hold the shift key. There you go. Now we're going to come back to our friend, the bevel tool, and we're going to set it. We want it to be to two with the shape of one. There we go. So we're just going to add a little bit like that. It does something a little bit funky right here. That's okay. I'm going to deselect, switch over to vertex mode. And what I want to do is I want to come down to vertex slide. With that vertex, just grab it and pull it down until it sort of rematches right there. No algorithm is exactly perfect. And so it did something that we just were easily able to adjust. Now in the back here, we want to come around and turn and turn our attention to it's added a little bit of geometry around the back. So I'm going to select there and there, come back to the move tool. So this is why that we turned on one of those options that has the view pivot around selections and that just makes it a lot easier. It has generated in face mode a polygon here and a polygon here in order to complete that inset. So I'm going to press the X key and delete those faces and when we look at this in the top we still have our symmetry point all along that edge right there. That's perfect. So now that we've added that constraining geometry, now we're going to apply the lattice. So I'm going to leave edit mode. So tab key, we are back in object mode. We're going to come back and we're going to reassign a lattice. Now I could have just disabled it too, honestly. Usually so many ways to do things in complex programs like Blender. We're going to reassign the lattice and we want to constrain it to the body verts. But here's the deal. We have to come in, we've generated new vertices. So let's, let's just temporarily turn this off and we want to come back in here and we need, since we've generated new geometry, we've got vertices that may not be in that selection set. So we're going to come into the front. Now I need to be in X-ray mode. We're going to select those. Uh, I'll leave those right there. I think those are okay to be selected. Come back down to vertex groups and we want to make sure these are all assigned to that body verts vertex group okay tab key come back to our modifier lattice make sure that we're only modifying those vertices and then we'll turn that back on there we go there we go okay that works good now we can just apply that because that needs to be baked in. So we'll come over, click apply, and then we can turn the lattice off since it's no longer assigned. Now we just need to mirror this. So we'll come back and add another modifier of a mirror. And this one needs to be just through the Y axis. And there we go. I'm going to apply that because that's the way that needs to be. We have a little bit of work to do on the back here. So these areas need some, a little bit of love and attention. Should have adjusted these before I did the symmetry, but that's totally okay. So what I'll do is I'm gonna come up to the top, come into X-ray mode, tab key. I'm gonna remove on the back the area that we're going to re-symmetry. Okay, like that, so X key. We're going to remove those because now we're going to come in and make an adjustment to this area right here. We have a center line coming down in the middle and it's a little bit too much geometry. 
I mean, it, technically it's not too much geometry, but we can make it more elegant. I'm going to, in edge mode, select that original center edge, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to hold the shift key and select there. We're going to take that whole thing, that semi-loop, and we're going to dissolve those edges. Perfect. Okay. And then here, we're just going to terminate that. So I'm going to press the K key, and I'm going to click there, to there, to there, return, come around here, K, here, to here, to here. Okay, that simplifies the geometry, and that works better for us. Now, I'd like this to be a little bit sharper. So we're going to come over into vertex mode, and we're going to switch back down to that vertex slide. And I'm going to slide these so that they are a little bit closer to that corner. Slide there, grab that one, slide that up, slide that down, and so on. Okay, so we're going to switch back into front view, and K key, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to come down, but I need to remember to press the C key so it goes all the way through. Click, hit return, and then we're going to do the same thing. K key, I'll click here to here to patch that. Now, if you're on a mouse, what you can do now is right click and then come down here and click to start a new loop without having to hit return. Click, right click to start a new connection. Click there, right click, click here to here, and then enter. And we've patched that. There we go. Okay, so we need to get this mirrored to the other side. So what I will do is I will come over here and marquee those right there. Bring up the context menu. We're going to separate those by the selection. So it'll become its own object. Press the tab key. So you can see that's become its own object. Now I can come over and add a modifier, a mirror modifier to go just across the y-axis, it will have maintained the original pivot of the original object. Click Apply, select the original body right there with those two, bring up the context menu, and join those back together. Now we need to make sure that these are, are all welded, so I'm going to press the Tab key. We're going to come into vertex mode, and I'm just going to roughly select around this area, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to do merge vertices by distance, and it'll tell us at the bottom. Now, I want to be, you just want to be a little bit careful. If this value is too large, it'll weld things that you don't want welded. Okay, so 32, it said 32 is consistent with the geometry that we have. And now we're ready to do a test with subdivision. So I'm going to come over, and we're going to do a subdivision surface assignment to the object. Press the tab key to leave polygon edit mode. Bring up the context menu and assign smooth shade. And now we can turn on smooth shading and we can actually see it. In fact, I'm going to have us preview it with a value of two, so it's a little bit better. Now we have a bit more work to do up here, but you can see as far as the whole general shape and body goes, this looks pretty good. But we have some detail work to do up here now. I'm going to press the tab key to come into edit mode and we're going to now focus on this front area. The real hammer had these kind of serrations. It wasn't perfectly round and that's what we're going to model. I'm going to have us come back into wireframe and we're going to turn off subdivision just at, at, at the display level so we're just modeling the base cage polygon mesh. We're going to come into edit mode and what we're going to do is let's come into the front view and we're going to select these right here, these corners. I'm going to select here, and I'm going to select here. But the modifier that I want to hold down is the control key. And when I click that, it'll do a loop select shortest distance between those two objects. So let's try this again. I'm going to hold the shift key to add this to the selection. And then I'm going to hold the control key and click that. Okay, let's do it again. Hold the shift key to add this to the selection. 
Now hold the control key and click there. And you can do that all the way around. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to come over to our friend, the bevel tool. We want it to be in the 2 1 configuration, as I call it. Click, hold, and drag, and we're going to pull up until it looks about like that. And that looks pretty good. But we don't want the result to be exactly like that. We need a little bit of fine tuning to the results. We don't want these right here. Let me come back over and I'll show you what this does when we turn subdivision back on. I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode. Do you see how it creates the, the bump, those small triangles in this otherwise broader topology? And I don't want that to happen. So let's turn off subdivision. Tab key. And what I'm going to do is something that's a little bit tedious is I'm going to have a select these and remove them and bring up the context menu and dissolve those edges. I'll come around. So just do that all the way around. So if, you, if I do two of them now, I can just press shift R because it remembers that last command and it, that's just very handy, very handy. Shift R, one more, Shift R. And what we want to do now is we want to reconnect these. We don't want to just leave those terminations like that. I'm going to press the K key and I'm going to click there to there to there and hit return. And that's actually going to allow the flow of this loop to come in and it'll work better. That will actually work better. Okay. So now we need to do this again. K key, click here to here to here. But instead of hitting enter at this point, I'm going to press the right button on the mouse and that will stop that loop. And it will allow me to start a new one by left clicking here, click, click, and finally return. And that may look a little funky, but that's actually going to work a little bit better. Let's come over here and turn subdivision back on tab key. We're going to switch over into a shaded mode. And there you go. So you can see how that works a little bit better. I think we can constrain it even a little bit more by coming in with the loop cut function. Let's let's do this. Let's come back over here so we can see this a little bit better. And in fact, I'm going to turn off optimal display and this will become even more apparent. I'm going to come here, click, hold and drag, and I'm going to pull that up. And that's actually going to help to constrain that a little bit more. Now, I'm, I'll come back to the move tool. I'm going to double click this loop and this loop. Those were created by that, those original operations that we had done. And this polygon and this polygon and this polygon are planar to each other. So we're going to come up to edge and we're going to do an edge crease and just left to right mouse is it's just a left to right mouse movement until you see those snap in place, click the mouse. And then you just want to make sure factor is one and that'll just distribute the subdivision of this parent polygon and its children so it doesn't pass that boundary. And this is really good for hard body modeling stuff. Okay, so tab key, we're going to turn on shaded. And that is just a little bit more controlled. Okay, tab key, we're going to turn off subdivision again, because it gets in the way. We have these small edges in here where we're kind of running into the same situation. So I'm going to remove these and we're going to do the same thing here. Dissolve edges. Okay. We have one final operation that we can do that can help this. So let's take a look at this in subdivision mode. We've got a couple of things here. Typically you want to have loops in subdivision surfaces, but there are times when you can actually leave an open loop like this and it'll produce good enough results. So let's turn subdivision back on and you can see how it subdivides that it produces the loops in the subdivision. And so, you know, you're going to run into nebulous situations where it's okay to leave configurations like that.